Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of lucidamone. This work was published in JAX by the group of ILEN de la Torre in their paper, Gram Scale and Antioselective Synthesis of Lucidamone. This compound was first isolated in 2019 from the fruiting bodies of Ganoderma lucidum, more commonly known as the reishi mushroom. This mushroom has been widely used in traditional Japanese and Chinese medicine. Initial biological studies show that it selectively inhibits the COX-2 enzyme and has potential as an anti-inflammatory. Interestingly, this compound is naturally produced as a racemic mixture, but only one of the isomers shows biological activity against the COX-2 enzyme. The molecule presents several challenges for synthesis, including a unique 65665 pentacyclic core that contains a bicyclo 222 octane subunit. This polycyclic framework has six contiguous stereocenters embedded within it. To construct this ring system, the researchers planned on first using an inverse electron demand Diels Alder cycloaddition, followed by a Mitz-Nobu reaction to tether the two halves of the molecule together. This would set the stage for an intramolecular Diels Alder reaction that would then complete the polycyclic core. So let's start by looking at this inverse electron demand Diels Alder. This took place between a pyrone and a benzyl enol ether. This was promoted by a copper complex containing a chiral ligand and produced the target compound in a quantitative yield with a 48 to 1 DR and a 98% EE. Unlike the typical Diels Alder reaction, the inverse electron demand Diels Alder has an electron poor diene and an electron rich dienophile. In this reaction, the copper complex first coordinates to the pyrone and ester carbonyl groups. This tethers to the dienophile allowing it to approach stereo selectively. DFT studies suggest that this cycloaddition is asynchronous, with the bond closest to the endocyclic oxygen forming first, then followed by the bond adjacent to the benzyl group. With the cycloaddition complete, the TBS group was then removed using TBAF. In order to set the stage for the intramolecular diels alder reaction, the authors needed to tether the indandoi moiety to this molecule. This was carried out using a mitz noble reaction. This reaction takes advantage of the ketoenol tautomerism exhibited by the diketone. Triphenylphosphine first attacks the diad reagent, generating a nitrogen based anion that can deprotonate the enol. The triphenylphosphonium moiety is then attacked by the primary alcohol of the lactone coupling partner. This produces an activated oxygen species upon the elimination of the hydrazine byproduct. This activated species serves as the electrophile which is then attacked by the ene oxide, eliminating triphenylphosphine oxide and producing the target ether in a 68% yield. With this formed, they could then carry out the intramolecular cycloaddition. Heating the compound to 140 degrees promotes the extrusion of carbon dioxide and this leads to the formation of a cyclic diene. This rapidly undergoes an intramolecular diels alder reaction with the enone and completed the formation of the polycyclic framework in a 77% yield. This reaction produced only a single isomer as the approach of the dienophile was determined by the stereochemistry of the carbon within the cyclohexadiene ring. With the framework complete, they then had to install the correct pendant groups. To do this, the compound was first reacted with lithium aluminium hydride. This first adds a hydride to the carbonyl centre, forming a tetrahedral aluminium alkoxide species that can then collapse to generate an aldehyde. Further reaction with lithal reduces this down to a primary alcohol, in addition to the reduction of the ketone. In the next step, these alcohols were oxidised using desmartin pyridinine to bring them to the plus 2 oxidation level. In this reaction, the oxygen first attacks the iodine centre and acetate is eliminated. This then acts as a base to deprotonate the molecule, forming a carbon oxygen double bond and eliminating the iodine byproduct. This reacted with both the primary and secondary alcohols, forming an aldehyde and a ketone. This aldehyde was required for a Grignard addition. Methyl magnesium bromide added to the aldehyde to produce a secondary alcohol upon workup. This was then oxidized to a ketone, again using desmartin periodinine with a 79% yield over three steps. At this stage of the synthesis, the benzyl protecting group could be removed using palladium and charcoal and hydrogen gas. This also served to hydrogenate the alkene and complete the formation of the 222 bicyclooctane moiety. 
with this in hand, simple deprotection of the TBS groups using TBAF furnished lucidamol in a 97% yield. Well, I hope you enjoyed this synthesis. In the next video, we will look at the total synthesis of portamines A and B.